Hikers, welcome back. Today we are doing a beautiful palm tree painting. My paint colors today are white, black, brown, yellow, orange, and red. I have a bunch of mixing plates to mix up all my colors on, and I have some paper towels, a can of water, and I'm going to be working with three different types of brushes today. The first brush is a medium square flat brush. The second brush is going to be a thin pointy brush for fine details. And our third brush is going to be a flat brush that's more round at the end. Now to get started, we are going to be mixing up our background colors. There are four. We're going to be mixing them up with our medium flat brush that's round at the edge. So our first color is going to be a light yellow. We're going to grab one scoop of white and one scoop of yellow. Mix, mix, mix until you have one solid color. Now our second color is going to be a lovely orange. I'm not going to clean my brush, just going to grab another scoop of white. Then I'm going to grab a scoop of orange, mix that all together. It's a pretty pale orange, nothing too bright. Feel free to even add a little bit of yellow into there to just make the color a little bit more on the yellow side of oranges. And the third color is going to be a deep orange, almost red. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of red, and a little bit of yellow. Mix those three colors up together. I'm probably going to add a little bit more red and yellow to mine to darken it up a touch but we're not trying to get pink, so that's why we add in that yellow color. And our third color, I'm going to be cleaning off my brush before I mix it up. We're gonna be mixing up just a light brown. So clean brush, and I'm gonna be grabbing just a little bit of white and a scoop of brown and mixing those together. Since I have the brown paint on my brush, I'm going to start with that, finding my horizon line about a third of the way up my canvas and drawing a line across. This divides our canvas into what is water and what is sky. Above that line, we're going to be doing these sort of circular motions going up into these little hills, creating this fun cloud moment that is on the lower side of our sky. You can see it's a little bit more shallow on the left and it goes a little higher up on the right. Now there is one other place in my sky where I have this brown color. It's right above it, just to the left. I'm just gonna be throwing some lines in, some horizontal lines. You can see some are longer, some are shorter. I'm just randomly throwing some in over there on this left, right above the cloud we made before. I'm going to clean off my brush and we are gonna get into our next sky color, which is going to be our yellow that we mixed up. Swirl that brush right in there. And we're just going to locate the highlights of our sky, starting at the top, um, maybe like an inch or two down from the bottom, focused on the left, then coming into the middle, and kind of coming down right to where that brown section is on the left part of our canvas. Um, I don't need to come down any real further than that. Then going to clean my brush and we're going to get into our orange, our lighter orange. This is basically going to fill up the rest of our sky. Um, so throw this color in there. If it mixes a little bit with the browns or the yellows, that's okay. If anything, that's kind of what we want. The only place where we're not going to be putting this orange is just at the tippy top of our canvas. We're saving that section for the reddish orange color. And finally, to finish off the colors in our sky, we are gonna be getting into the reddish uh, orange color. 
This is going to be going along the top edge of our canvas as well as a few other places within the lighter orange sections of our sky. Just working from side to side, um, putting horizontal brush strokes in throughout and letting it blend with the colors that it touches. Now if you feel like you put too much of one other color or maybe it's not blending enough, you can always go back in with your yellows, your browns, your lighter oranges, whatever you need to do to get to your sky um, where you really like how it looks. The last part of our sky are the highlights. So I'm going to be taking my pointy brush in white paint and a couple of areas just doing random little drag lines, little tick marks. Um, you can see I have some in the top left area of my sky, some towards the middle top. Um, I'm going to be putting some in the middle of my canvas, some towards the brown cloud of my sky. Um, the one place that really, really matters is where we're going to be having our sun peak through. So after we figure out where these basic highlights are going to live, um, then right in the middle of our sky, just in the lower section in the middle, we're gonna do a nice line and you can make it messy. And above that line, we're gonna draw a semicircle or a little rainbow shape for our sun. Now it's time for our water. We are gonna be getting into our medium square brush. So we're gonna bring out a new brush to use and to fill up our water, we're gonna be getting into our light orange. Fill up that whole water with the orange and do it fairly quickly because we are gonna be blending um, another color on top of it and while it's still wet. So while that paint's still wet, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that um, light yellow that we mixed up on my brush and throw some horizontal brush strokes all throughout my water. This is just to give some fun movement to get some highlights in our water. Um, feel free to put as many or as little of this as you like. When you are done with this step, go ahead and put that brush away and you can take out your small pointy brush. We're going to wiggle our brush in some white paint and we're going to focus a little bit of a highlight right at the top of the water underneath where our sun is. The lines at the top of water are going to start longer and then they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, shorter, shorter, shorter as we move down our water. Almost like a little funnel or a tornado shape. You can feel free to exaggerate some of the lines, make them more askew um, so that not all the lines are the same. We are also gonna be adding some highlights throughout the water, just tiny little lines of dots going across. It could be two dots, three dots, four dots, five dots, it really doesn't matter. Um, these are just to give that water this little glisteny look. Now before we do anything else, we're gonna let our painting dry for about 10 to 15 minutes before we move on. Once it is dry, we're gonna come back and we're gonna be getting into our small pointy brush with some black paint. Now we wanna water this paint down, so I'm gonna add a good two or three droplets of water to it. You can see it's pretty runny. Take the majority off of our brush, and we're gonna be adding very thin lines of this uh, watered down black throughout our water. Uh, we wanna give the illusion of ripples in the water without it being too vibrant. So we don't wanna use straight black paint. It'll take over the whole painting a little bit of a watered down black is all we need and using very light pressure on our brush so that our lines can stay thin. Next with pure black paint, no watered down, we're gonna take that same brush and on our horizon line, we're gonna draw a line across. That horizon line, remember, is right underneath of that big brown cloud that we started our painting with. Draw a line all the way across, and then you can work on top of that line to add some fun little hills or mountains. Mm -hmm. 
Next, it's time for the palm trees. Same brush, still using black paint. We're gonna draw the trunks first. The first trunk is just to the left of the sun, um, and it's just also above the sun. Right around there, drawing a line down. Start with light pressure at the top of the trunk and use heavy pressure at the bottom. The second tree is sort of to the right of the sun, somewhere in the middle of the sun and the edge on the right. Then I'm gonna go back and thicken up the trunks to where I like. Now we're gonna give the tops of our trunks some texture. So we're doing these small little lines where we're starting on the trunk and then flicking outwards, upwards, sideways, downways, um, just right at the top. This just gives that illusion that this is like a palm tree trunk. We're gonna do it to both of our tree trunks. Now for the actual palm leaves, we are gonna start by drawing a little skeleton for them. These are lines that curve outwards, upwards to the sides, almost like a hand fan does. They start at an axis point and then kind of flick out and away. If it helps you think about it more, maybe like a sun ray um, an, or an umbrella on the inside. So we have these arms, I will call them, our arms of our palm trees. On our arms of our palm trees, we are gonna be adding smaller arms. So these are gonna be the leaves per se. We are just going to draw lines um, out and away from that line that we made. Opposite side um, of that same leaf, you wanna make sure that you put the lines going the opposite way. And we're gonna fill this in. We want it to be very lush, very filled in. Now this is the last and final step to our painting. So once you have finished your palm trees, don't forget to sign your masterpiece. Take ownership. Everyone was gonna be so impressed with what you've created. We'd also be super impressed and we'd love to see what you're painting at home. Feel free to post on social media, tag us at muse underscore paint bar so we can check them out. And if you wanna see more from our channel, make sure you like and subscribe. We have so many tutorials to try to paint. Great for kids, great for any party, any event that you may have. And with that guys, don't forget to always paint outside the lines. Bye everybody.